conservation ethic for Palau is really the chiefs, the fishermen, the entire community, they live within the resources. And then if the chiefs and the fishermen say, oh, we're worried about the resources, maybe something is wrong, they would immediately put a, what they call the bull to stop fishing while it's being watched. And so that was the system. Traditionally, these things were sustainable. Move forward to the present day, you've got motor boats, advanced fishing gears, you've got freezers, and so basically, as many fish as you could catch, you could store them, uh, and then use them at a later date. The fish uh, decline because uh, they, don't, they don't go to many places to fish, so they just get the fish until the fish become very small size. So a marine protected area is basically an area of marine waters that you protect. Um, you set very clear goals and objectives for what that is. And some can be for enhancing your fisheries, but historically, and especially in this region, they've mostly been to preserve specific habitats. When we got the startup, there was simply a collection of protected areas from this village, that village, and other villages, so no network at all. There were a couple of communities that had conservation officers. They didn't have a management plan to guide their work. They didn't have uh, the skills uh, that were needed. A lot of these uh, protected areas were just paper parks. You would roll out a map at a meeting, draw some boundaries on that map, draw a box around it, come up with some rules and regulations that can occur within that box, and then that often goes into, say, a form of legislation. Across Micronesia, typically most of the jurisdictions have locked up or decided to protect somewhere between 15 to 25, even up to 30 percent of their reefs as no-take marine protected areas in this form of management and conservation. What usually doesn't go along with that is how we'll fund enforcement and monitoring for that area. And then in 2010, with the PAN financing legislation and funding, a lot of these uh, paper parks uh, became real protected areas. What some of our uh, studies have found looking across the region is that very few of these marine protected areas are actually effectively conserving the resource. The oceans are connected, so what you do in one place will affect another. So you can't just create these small islands of protection without really looking at management around these areas. Because the fish inside the closed areas were protected, but the fish outside were not. So for the Northern Reef's work, we worked with fishers to first understand why their fish was declining. When they understood that they've been taking fish before they had a chance to reproduce. They recognized that they needed to do something. We need to implement fishing permits to then control who's coming to fish. And so they said, we do size limits. And we're very happy to see that slowly we're seeing a change that fish are actually getting bigger. And the fish now, in theory, are able to at least breed once before they're caught. The fishermen working with their chiefs and saying that something has to be done given that the decline of the resources. And that perhaps gave us the opportunity to really try out many of the things that we're doing and show that success before we replicate it elsewhere. It's not that you protect the ocean because of species, because of us. <laughs> 